Let me tell you something. If tomorrow isn't promised, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget there's any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about it? Yourself or the people that are beside you? Or the people that you know you're going to give everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity at life, one chance at life, to do whatever you want to do. To make whatever mark you want to make. To leave whatever legacy you want to leave. And it is your choice, your decision, for what you are going to do. Every story has a beginning. Mine starts on June 5th, 1999 at Norton's Hospital, when my mom and dad held me in their loving arms. Growing up, I was quiet, shy, and always stayed by my parents' side. I give all the thanks in the world to both my wonderful parents. I've never seen a man work so hard to keep his family together and happy than my dad. He truly puts everything before himself, and I love him for this. I strive every day to quit worrying about myself so much, and I've learned to focus on helping others in my life. My mother, on the other hand, would never let me leave the house without asking me if I brushed my teeth, washed my face, took a shower, or even just how I was doing. This got annoying most of the time, but I realized no one would ever look out for me as much as her. My mom is always there for me when I need her. I played baseball, soccer, and basketball as a child, but one sport stuck out to me the most, cross country. I had grown a passion for running. I started my sixth grade year and had a great time meeting new friends. I love the competitive nature of the sport, even though life has thrown so many obstacles my way. About halfway through my seventh grade year, my doctor diagnosed me with osgood slaughter's disease. This was from growing too fast. I developed micro tears below my kneecap, which caused a lump to form on my leg. The doctor told me to stop running, but this didn't stop me from doing what I love. Around my junior year of high school, I started noticing problems with my breathing. With that knowledge, I made a doctor's appointment and figured out I was only getting half the oxygen of what I needed. They diagnosed me with exercise-induced asthma. My body would tingle every time I got done with the run. This started to become a problem and will affect me for the rest of my life. But I'm not going to let a circumstance define what I can and cannot do. These past few years have especially been hard on me and my family. My grandpa on my mother's side passed away December 17, 2016. You would have thought I hung the moon by the way he talked about me. My other grandpa on my father's side is 96 and cannot be left by himself. He lives at his own house, so someone is always with him 24-7. Every day I'm over at his house taking care of him, helping him with everything he cannot do on his own. Trust me, it's not easy taking care of somebody, but between my mom, sister, dad, and aunt, we find a way to make that happen. I'd do anything for the people I love. It's just the way I was raised. The most important thing I have learned up until now is that the love of my family will help me endure whatever life throws my way. Nobody will ever understand me or support me more than them. When you put other people's needs before yours, you see and feel real joy. There's nothing better than putting a smile on someone's face, and there's nothing worse than letting someone down.